not like other billionaires. Hi, hello, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, I guess I'll shoot you, is what I was implying there. My name is Carly, and today we are going to be reviewing billionaires reading lists. That's it, that's it, that's the video. We're gonna be rating their lists, rating their taste. It's not about who they are as a person, because I am of the group of people that believe if you are a billionaire, you're not that great, because you haven't redistributed your wealth in an effective way. We don't have to argue about it. If you believe opposite, you're not gonna change my mind, I'm not gonna change yours who fucking cares? I real it's- life's too short. But we're gonna be rating their reading lists. Are they good? Are they bad? Are the keys to becoming a billionaire in here? I'm wearing my girl boss blazer in the hopes that today I will learn a thing or two about what it takes to be a billionaire. Maybe I have it, maybe I don't, but there's only one way to find out and that's through reading their reading lists and deciding if they're good or bad or not. Let's begin, girl bosses. I don't know why I said it like that. Okay, let's start off with Elon Musk. In terms of sci-fi books, he likes Isaac Asimov. I'm gonna go out right out there and say it right now, I don't read sci-fi. I don't do it. I just don't like it. I think part of that has to do with the fact that I'm literally terrified of space. Like really, really scared of it. I don't want to go up there. I get why we would want to. When I was a kid, I was never like into space. That wasn't my thing. I was a dinosaur bitch. I was into dinosaurs and that was my hyper fixation as a child. I did not care about space. I get that it's important. I'm not coming for space. I just am scared of it <laughs> deeply. Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I do love the Lord of the Rings series. They're the only fantasy books that I've read and really loved. I love The Hobbit. I've got no notes on this. It's a red flag book for sure, but I participate in the red flag. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a basic ass fantasy choice. The kinds of people who like Lord of the Rings probably think they're better than everyone else. That's all I have to say about that. I also am that though. So what can I say? Uh, Benjamin Franklin, An American Life by Walter Isaacson, Einstein, His Life and Universe, Zero to One Notes on Startups or How to Build a Future. Elon Musk's tastes are a bunch of nonfiction about businesses or entrepreneurs or inventors or sci-fi. When a billionaire is asked to present their reading list, they don't think, what are books that I like to read? They think, what's my brand? I'm not saying Elon Musk doesn't like these books, but it is not a coincidence that every book he has listed on his reading list is either a sci-fi book about space or a business book about being an entrepreneur. And that's Elon Musk's brand. He's like, I love space and I'm weird. I'm not like other billionaires, but also I'm a creative, I'm a self-starter, that kind of thing. And that's why I like the appearance of the Lord of the Rings books on this list because I'm at least like, that doesn't have to do with your brand. Like, what would I give to just have Elon Musk on this list have one of his favorite books just be like, Eat, Pray, Love, or like Rob Lowe's biography? <laughs> Let's move on to Jeff Bezos. Jeff, if you're watching this, and I know you are, I encourage you to absolutely eat my ass. Oh, it's the same shit. Okay, his favorite business book is Built to Last by Jim Collins. Let's see what this is about. This is not a book about charismatic visionary leaders. It is not about visionary product concepts or visionary products or visionary market insights. This is a book about visionary companies. The author asks, what makes a truly exceptional company different from other companies? Fucking kill me, I'm already bored. Honestly, very girl boss of Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is a girl boss. Just have to gaslight, which I'm sure Jeff Bezos does, and gatekeep. And I guess Jeff Jeff Bezos is gatekeeping fair treatment for workers, so that's not nothing. The Black Swan by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, another book about being like, business brain. What is an exceptional mind? Which I hate. Like, do any of these billionaires just sit down and crack open pop literature? Jeff Bezos, just read a Stephen King and get over yourself. Oh, and he does have Remains of the Day by Kazu Ishiguro. Okay, here's what I will say about Jeff Bezos. I want to fight him physically, but I am happy that at least one of the books on this 10 book list isn't some bullshit visionary business book. The ones that are just like, in order to be a billionaire like me, wake up at 5 a.m., think innovatively. It's not about having generational wealth. Okay, let's move on to Steve Jobs. I feel like I should be a little lenient with Steve Jobs because, um, 
<laughs> he's dead. Like, do I need to just absolutely destroy a dead billionaire? I could, but it doesn't seem right. To be fair, he was very mean to his daughter. So he's not faultless in this, but it's sad to die nonetheless. I'm not gonna like go hard at Steve Jobs. So first we have 1984 by George Orwell. Okay, this I like because this is a real book that I believe Steve Jobs read and believes Steve Jobs liked. It's not like brain think the way billionaires are thinking that's different than you or some bullshit business self-help book. All of these fucking billionaires are just reading like the business bro version of girl wash your face and they think they're better for it and they're not. So I like that 1984 is like a classic and weird because it's all about how Big Brother's watching and Steve Jobs basically invented what is now Big Brother. Okay, we have Moby Dick by Herman Melville, which we all know is just about Ishmael. Is that right? He goes, call me Ishmael. Am I making that? No, that's real. And it's about Captain Ish uh, Ahab. I have a book channel. I should know this. And he's obsessed with killing the white whale. Like he wants to kill the white whale. He wants to conquer it. Here's why I love this. Because I'm sure Steve Jobs put this on the list just to be like, I love this book. Not thinking about the fact that it communicates so much about him. Anytime anyone loves Moby Dick, it's because they think they are the captain and they, they're like, I have to conquer. I have to outwork. I have to rise above everyone else. I do see that for Steve Jobs. I do. Okay, some more business books, some more Zen yoga books. That's, I do think that's cool of Steve Jobs. Oh, and that's everything. Okay, Steve, better. I thought I was gonna have to hold myself back because I was about to absolutely rage on a dead man, but um, he's got pretty good taste. I like, I like his list. Now we're moving on to Mark Brisket and Ribs Zuckerberg, the scary pale surfer we all know and love, the robot that testified in front of Congress, creator of all things evil in social media. <laughs> Sapiens, which makes sense, that seems exactly like the kind of book he would like, but it is like a book, you know what I mean? <laughs> that doesn't explain it anything at all. It's not just like a business bro book. It's like at least about something, which I respect. Although I will say I will never read Sapiens out of spite because everyone's like, you gotta read Sapiens. Oh my God, you haven't, you've gotta read it. And I'm like, well, I have issues with authority and now I'm never gonna read it. I know I'm not gonna get on this list looking for Alaska by John Green, but God, I would just, I would love that. Halfway through his book recommendation list, Mark Zuckerberg is like, I love John Green green. The Fault in Our Stars made me cry. I wish. I wish. Okay, there are some interesting, it's mainly nonfiction, but there are some actually good nonfiction on this list. Um, although I do believe Mark Zuckerberg is evil, and again, I know for a fact I could take him in a fight, I do believe that he has read this list. Like, he's got The New Jim Crow, he's got Gang Leader for a Day, like, books that are nonfiction, but aren't just like, tech, creativity, innovation, we must always be working. But then he also has just some bullshit books that I don't care about, like, Creativity Inc., which like, I guess why someone would want to read that. What is it about a billionaire tech guy that they seem to have a refusal to read any fiction at all? Is it misogyny? Like, is it internalized misogyny? Is nonfiction perceived as more masculine? I'm, I'm confused. This list is fine. It definitely, um, it shows that he's like uh, smart, which uh, he like invented computers and shit, so I'm not surprised. I'm editing right now. Did I just think Mark Zuckerberg invented the computer? He invented Facebook, Carly. Carly, he invented Facebook. But it does also signal to me that he is insane, which we already know because he repeated brisket and ribs like 17 times in that one video. But hopefully for Canadian Thanksgiving, you get to eat a lot of brisket and ribs. How many of you guys are, are eating brisket and ribs tonight? Brisket and, and ribs. They taste doubly better when, um, when you hunted the animal yourself, so. Okay, now let's move on to five summer books that Bill Gates has recommended. I feel like I should also go easy on him because he's getting a divorce. I'll drink to that. The Choice by Dr. Edith Ava Edgar. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Okay, it's a book that follows this woman's life as she was a prisoner in Auschwitz, a concentration camp, and then follows her life after she survives and moves to New York City and becomes a therapist and talks about how she processed that trauma. Okay, Bill Gates. That's a pretty good book. We have Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, which I've never read, but I did 
do an improv format based on it. Isn't that the same thing as reading a book? It involves six interrelated stories taking place centuries apart. Okay, I do love that Bill Gates is like a reader. Like he's not like other billionaires. He reads fiction and I do like that. And I guess that shows just how low the bar is. That's my, that's my bar. If you read fiction, you're at the top of the heap. Okay, we have The Ride of a Lifetime by Bob Eager. One of the best business books I've read. Why do you have to read a business book? Eager does a terrific job of explaining what it's like to be a CEO of a large company, whether you're doing it for business, anti to for an entertaining read. I just don't understand the point of this. If you run a company, how much more about business is there to learn? I'm just, okay, this guy looked over Disney during its most transformative time. So I guess Bill Gates is a Disney adult. That's what we've learned from this. Oh my God. He also recommended The Rosie Trilogy by Graham Simpson, which is a book about a professor with Asperger's. It's basically a rom-com around him. And there's three books. I've read two of them. And thank you, Bill Gates, for recommending a book that isn't just a mental flex. You're still a billionaire, so I'm watching you, but I do love that recommendation. And finally, we're gonna talk about not a billionaire, but maybe a billionaire in the making. The girl boss to end all girl bosses and my personal role model and icon, Elizabeth Holmes. Jesus, if you're new to this channel, <laughs> imagine this is the first video you see and you're like, she wants to be Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> I love Elizabeth Holmes. Not because I think what she did was right, but just because she's unhinged. And I think it is high time we have a woman who is just as unhinged as all these other billionaire and startup bros. Elizabeth Holmes, if you're subscribed, let me know what you're reading right now, girl. <laughs> okay, let's see. The Iliad and the Odyssey. Okay, she said she read them when she was a child and I don't believe her. Maybe she did and I'm judgmental because I wasn't reading the Iliad and the Odyssey as a child. Again, what I said about Elon Musk, it's like these book lists are a way for these billionaires and entrepreneurs to like build a brand. So she's like, yeah, I actually read the Iliad and the Odyssey because I'm very, very smart. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Same thing as Steve Jobs. It means you're unhinged and you think you need to conquer something. The complete story of human civilization. Jesus. This is what Elizabeth Holmes has to say about this book. And this is me when the prof calls on me to participate in class and I haven't done the reading. It's very powerful. It shapes your frame of thinking when you encounter people and situations. Tell me one thing that happened in this book. I love this. Girl bossification. All of these fucking books are just her channeling main character energy and refusing to admit it. I'm not, I don't think I'm the main character. I just, I just think I need to conquer the white whale and also I'm the king and these philosophies are for me. So what have I learned from these reading lists? What is the key to being a billionaire? According to them, it is reading books that only align so closely with your personal brand. Water your personality down to one or two things and then only read things that relate to that. Besides those books that fall right into your brand, you you can read business books. Sure, you're already a CEO and probably know more than the books, but it's important for people to think that reading is how you achieved your billionaire status, not from a combination of luck and connections. Also, lie. If you're Elizabeth Holmes, just lie. Say you read the Iliad. Say you've read any book you want to read because no one's going to challenge you on it. And if they do, they can't prove anything. So I think if you follow those steps, you will be well on your way to becoming a billionaire in 2021. I hope you got something out of this video today. I hope we've all realized that becoming a billionaire is achievable and we can all do it if we just read these books. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.